As I stated before, the the reason that I'm doing this is well, two reasons. Because you know, I want to give you know uh, Australians who you know believe the things that I do, uh, you know, a voice and and give them the the confidence that you know they're they're not alone and that they can you know take part in the the fight back as well. But there's also uh, a lot of other Australians who you know just live their daily lives who aren't engaged in this. Where to use your favourite term, we uh, basically need to red pill them uh, and. And so, as, so that's the, the second part of, you know, what we're trying to achieve, red pilling uh, the masses. And uh, like I said before, I do believe that a lot of Australians are already on our side. I mean, uh, you know, 85% of Australians support Australia Day. Uh, there was that poll a year ago which said that, you know, 49% of Australians wanted to uh, ban Muslim immigration. Uh, you know, some uh, on the right do think that goes a bit far, but it, you know, shows that, you know, the Australian people, they are concerned about, you know, the immigration uh, s system and, you know, making sure that, you know, we have a, a nation that is socially cohesive. So there, there's the, uh, yes. the, the public is, you know, there to, um, you know, uh, have their voices heard. Um, uh, but it, it's it's one thing to you know get uh, get them to you know make some noise, but it's also another thing to then translate that noise to influencing the the political class because the you know the politicians in both major parties they say you know no there's you know nothing wrong with you know laws against free speech you know there's there, there, there's nothing wrong with our you know immigration system uh, as it is you know uh, uh, climate change you know we've still got to have all this. Uh, renewable energy that there, there seems to be still this massive disconnect where people feel let down by our political class but they keep voting them back in yeah absolutely and i think most of it has to do with the fact that we've relied so heavily for generations on the idea that um, politics is a solution okay you, you don't start nothing works top down in, the, in that in that um socio-political sense it has to be a genuine will of the people and I think the whole idea of, you know, that's the government's job to do this or the government's job to do that. You know, we deserve ABC because it's the government's job. I mean, again, that's a very anti-libertarian idea, but I think that's the trap that a lot of Australians have fallen into. The government will fix it for us, not we'll fix it for ourselves. But I think, you know, I, I think people are waking up to the fact that that's just not a reality. Um, you're right. I think Australians are generally... Um, are endowed with common sense, you know. I, I, I genuinely think that they have been made to feel insignificant and inferior by a very loud, very well-funded machine, um, uh, mostly uh, comprised of, of, of leftists and, 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 and cultural Marxists, that present a narrative of the world or a narrative of our country that isn't actually so. And they've played on a lot of guilt and a lot of, you know, past horrors and, and things that we've done in the past. They've uh, rewritten history books to basically make things look a certain way. And, and you know, I think there's been a real breakdown in the generations. Like, we don't listen to our grandparents anymore and about their, you know, what they went through. We generally don't speak to people too much younger than us. I do see a coming together happening at the moment. So in terms of bread pilling the masses, as, as you, you're saying there, I think... First of all, lead by example. I don't do parents well, um, though I am one. And, and, and one, of the, one of the things I've, I'm getting better at it. One of the things I find fascinating at, you know, four, five-year-old birthday parties and things like that is, you know, we'll talk about a subject. And I'm listening to people speak in harsh tones. So you talk about safe schools, for example. Um, and... The majority of parents are deeply uncomfortable by the idea that their their child may be actually taught masturbation with dildos and sex toys uh, in a classroom environment by a forty five year old. You know that 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 makes them deeply uncomfortable at a at a maternal or paternal level. And they speak in hushed tones and all that sort of stuff. And I love drawing it out. I love drawing it out. And the moment you encourage them that they're not alone, that other people think that way too, um, on any on any subject, you know. Um, it, it really gives me a lot of pleasure. And I do see a lot more of that happening. But I do think we have to lead by example. You know, a lot of people who otherwise thought they were alone and were the only people who'd ever heard of Milo Yiannopoulos um, 
met at these events, for example, uh, and they realized, oh, my gosh, so I'm not the only person in Australia who's heard of this guy, you know. Um, I'm not the only person in Australia who doesn't believe the narrative that is a Nazi and a white supremacist and all that sort of stuff, and he's actually got a few sensible things to say. Um, you know, I, I, I think we just need more of that, and Australians will do it themselves. I think the she'll be right attitude um, that has pervaded Australian society for a long, long time is drying up. Um, the far left don't think she'll be right. They're always on a, on a march. They've always got an agenda. And I think Australians are only in recent days been waking up to that agenda. And I think, you know, it's going to be war. It's going to be war. Um, we just have to remind them that they are powerful, that everybody is powerful. Okay, and it's not about changing the world. It's about changing their world. Uh, I definitely feel, and this, uh, this is always the case in other countries, that things have got to get a whole lot worse for people to, you know, really, you know, engage and revolt. Um, you know, I have people look in admiration, for example, at, you know, what's going on in, you know, Poland and Hungary. You know, they're really, uh, the people there, are, yeah. you know, have really wanted to, you know, defend Western civilization, you know, their, their, their values. But the reason why they've, they've got that attitude is because they suffered under 45 years of communism. Uh, and so, and so yeah. it sort of, sort of made me wonder, like, is that what we have to, uh, you know, go through to, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, we, you know, have, have an appreciation and, you know, make sure we want to, you know, defend uh, our way of life. But I, I definitely do think, well, as we've seen this year after, you know, we, there was the euphoria of 2016 with, you know, Brexit and Trump, but this year has been, you know, it's, it's, it's been quite demoralising. But yes, it's it's definitely going to get, you know, a lot, a lot worse. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, that's when, uh, you know, we need to make sure that when that time, you know, happens, when, you know, it, it, it does become, you know, uh, intense that, you know, the Australian people are ready to, you know, f uh, fight back and say, because uh, I mentioned politicians before, like, uh, even, like they, they do listen to, you know, too much the, you know, the cultural elite and the intelligentsia, but, you know, they are still shit scared of the people and the voters. And if they receive, like, you know, a thousand phone calls in a day saying, you know, what you're doing is disgusting, like, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll freak out and, you know, cha uh, ch change their uh, position. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't think the current staple of them are scared enough of the people, to be honest, okay? I, I Because they're mostly bipartisan on the things that, that really matter um, against the interests of Australians, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I genuinely think that um, it, it, it's not tick box A or B. As, as we discussed before, there are many, many, many different solutions to, to a problem. And we're so used to just looking at box A or B and, the, you know, the little green sea every now and again. Uh, that, that's not the way the world works. And I, I think people are realizing that arguments are far more nuanced, that just slogans um, aren't the answer. Uh, there are so many ways of looking at things. Yes, we have the blessing of being able to look around the world at, you know, Poland, Hungary. And you can also look at the horrors of the socialist world um, sweeping across, you know, United States uh, in some states over there where George Soros's Black Lives Matter and Antifa are, are just causing hell uh, across Chicago and the like. Well, but again, most people generally, I, I think sadly you're right. Things are going to get a little bit darker before they get lighter, if not a lot darker before they get lighter. And it's that suffering that's going to motivate. So most of us who have been red-pilled, um, it's happened because of an event in our lives that was hard. It was horrible. Okay. And, and some people lose their health. And so they have time to read again instead of just watch television. And they realize, oh, my gosh, history. I forgot about that. And, and they, you know, it's always the historians. It's always the artists. It's always the ones uh, sort of that don't that use another side of their brain, that are the first ones to start questioning wars, why we need to go to this war, why we need to vote on this policy. You know what I mean? And I think, I think Australia is in for a, a bit more darkness before, before it gets lighter. But I think that darkness is uh, at least the Brexit to Trump thing and, you know, what we saw on both sides of the same-sex marriage campaign and the lengths people were willing to go to uh, put forth their side. Um, it does give me hope. 
that there is going to be a, a lot more social activism, in a sense, into the future uh, from all camps as things get darker. And, yeah, if there's one thing that we've seen over and over again, we have a good thing here in Australia and uh, we don't want to spoil it. We don't want to spoil it. We, want, we don't want to go the way of Germany. You know, we don't want to go the way of uh, some parts of Italy at the moment. We don't want to go the way of really socialist countries that have uh, totally undermined the fabric of their Western civilizations. Um, so, yeah, we just have to keep talking, man, and encouraging, granting people the courage to speak because speech is powerful and, and we have to defend free speech at all costs. It costs us too much to get, and it could be undone in one generation if we are not vigilant. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.